Welcome in to DMVR Buffs Live presented by Infinity Park. Uh, if you're looking for something to do in the summer, they've got all sorts of great options. They're showing movies out there. They're, uh, they have concerts out there. Just go to Infinity Park at Glendale.com slash events. You'll check out everything that they have going on. Can't go wrong with any of it. Uh, now, though, let's talk about the Colorado Buffaloes. Fine. The season starts tomorrow. Yes. 38 point favorites against the uh, Northern Colorado Bears. What do you think of that, Ryan? My main takeaway about this game, well, first of all, I'm just like, I, I could not be more elated to go to Folsom Field. Like, I know. Honestly, they could be doing anything there tomorrow. Like, there could be like a, a piano recital for third graders that I don't even know, mm -hmm. and I'd be down to go to Folsom Field and just spend my Friday night there. Um, but the fact that we're getting a football game there, the fact that we just get to like see a Folsom sunset tomorrow, the fact that we get to drink a beer under the flat irons, like all of that, that's all I can think about. It's just like, wow, like that we were really deprived of that for. I mean, it's been almost two full years since we've done something like that. So, uh, I I can't wait for that. As for the game, yeah, I've been able to dig up a nice bit of disdain for um, Ed McCaffrey in Northern Colorado. This really, week. I'm yeah. glad to hear that. It's it's tough to do. Yeah, if any Broncos fans are watching this, just like close your ears for a second. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, he kind of gives off a douchey vibe to me. Um, all of his kids didn't go to see you. Yep. It might not even be his fault, but I'd like to blame him for it. He played a part in yep. what I've uh, heard. And I read a story that Sean Keeler wrote today about it in which he said like he was just like making these little comments that pissed me off. Like oh, there was just it was really tumultuous up there and like little mm -hmm. comments like that where I was just like, eh, I think I want to beat the crap out of you this week. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's definitely some of that. And and again, I I have only had fond feelings for Ed McCaffrey for basically my entire life. And I don't even want to say like I've had negative feelings toward him in the last week or so, but, but I'll say that there, there are definitely some new feelings in there. And you hear some stories <laughs> about like the recruiting, you hear some stories about like him talking reports and it's just like, yeah, you know what? I want, I want to watch this happen. Yes. Whatever happens tomorrow. And I think it's going to be pretty fun to watch. I, I want to watch it happen. And the other thing for me, so, so I went to Montana Big Sky okay, Conference. Yes. You've also got Northern Colorado Big Sky Conference. I I never had like any feelings toward Northern Colorado just because they were never competitive in, right, in the right. Big Sky, and so they were always kind of like it's kind of like the Oregon State, the Washington State of the Big Sky, where it's like sure do whatever. Hey, maybe pull an upset out of conference and help us out or something. But but yeah, it, it's definitely a weird matchup. By the way, sorry, I had this like big beautiful tweet ready for the mm -hmm. live show, and then when I went to paste it into my new tweet, it was just not there anymore. So I had to re rebuild the whole thing. It's like a really tough scene over here. Yeah, that um, is I feel like it's not as good this time. Oh like no. second first draft was really where the But what was different about it? I don't know. I forget. I feel like it's missing <laughs> something. Um, well, here's here's what might be missing cuz we've got an awesome show for you guys. Uh we're going to start out. We're going to draft the position groups, just take turns. You know, what's the what's the first overall pick? We think in outside linebackers, inside linebackers, running backs. We're going to run through all that. Uh, I had a chance to talk with our guy Evan Batty this morning about mm. baby Ralphie and uh, we ran through and uh, ranked some uh, so, so, I'm so excited about this baby Ralphie I She's incredible pay a lot of money just to be able to like give her a real <sighs> hug I know right and and like I don't even care that there's probably like a horn coming through your throat or something like I'd still be down she looks so calm she she looks so sweet she look yeah there's she like she looks perfect th like oh god it's like when you see someone's dog know. and you're just like that's a nice dog mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how I feel about baby Ralphie. I know. I feel like there's there's gotta be another side though. When when she gets out there tomorrow night, and we don't know for sure she's gonna be able to run. They've been so, kind of hedging things. They're so gonna give it a try. What? Where did that come from? I haven't heard any hedges. I mean, it's basically that they haven't straight up said it. Let, let me pull up this part of the press release because because they made it pretty clear in there. Um, but but basically, when she gets out there, I honestly think like. That's when the buffalo comes out a bit. Mm. You know, that's when she starts charging, she starts kicking, trying to pull away, that kind of stuff. So far, though, seems super sweet. Um, okay, let me pull up this quote. Uh, so this is from Taylor Stratton, who runs the Ralphie yes. program. Uh, she said, 
uh, let's see, all of Ralphie's training is completed with positive reinforcement, and ultimately the decision on whether or not she runs will always depend on her safety and that of her handlers. So there's things like she she isn't going to be at Ralphie's corral tomorrow just because... They don't want to give her extra anxiety. She's a 15-month-old buffalo, and again, no expert here. Seem pretty unpredictable. How are you not an expert? I know, it's such a waste, <laughs> like, right? I know, I tried you to talk to Kaylee job. Webb on the soccer team, but we'll, we'll make that happen. I'm sure that she has some Buffalo facts for us on the way at some it point. It has to mean a lot to her that raised this by, Ralphie was I raised know. by a beef cow. I know, this this Ralphie is incredible. Like, orphaned at birth, raised by a beef cow, comes from, like, uh, from from Nebraska, but but a family owns that ranch that has like the five members. The fact that you used the term "occupied CU. territory" on know, Twitter made me really happy. <laughs> I was really excited. Those about are that really like that was the reason term. it was a quote tweet, not a reply. Yes. Did I retweet something like it that? It was a quote tweet. Yeah, yep. occupied territory. Fantastic. It's what it is. It's what it yes. is. And there should it's be like more. It's like an embassy. Of it. Exactly. Like a embassy. <laughs> yes, that's that's what we're officially calling that. You give us Ralphie that you're an embassy. So yes, you're a Colorado embassy of Nebraska. Yeah. To get back to the plan for the show, though, <laughs> um, we've also got, uh, like I said, Evan Batty coming in. We, I, I ran him through a bunch of live mascots across college football, and he gave us some rankings, uh, some fun stuff in there, and then we're gonna close things out by uh, playing some over unders for this UNC game tomorrow. Yes, you know? uh, Dre and I have been. Um, begging and pleading of Colorado Colorado legislation to allow player props on college games. For some reason, they find that to be like across the line. <laughs> um, it's like, I don't so understand lame. why. So uh, we have to come up with our own player props. We do. That's okay. I want For to now. be able to bet on Nate Landman in particular. And I know this like, is a Nate bad Landman time. Nate Landman tackles? Like, are you kidding me? Uh, what would that line even be set at? I, I know tomorrow's different because he might not even play the second half because of the way the game could go, and there's so many guys they want to get out there, but a normal game, is the line 12 and a half, 11 it's and a half? definitely it's at the lowest, nine and a half. At the lowest. Yeah. And he says he's playing the best football of his life right now. Which is, uh, he, <laughs> I mean, incredible. Let's jump into this draft, though. Um, I have a feeling we'll be talking more about these linebackers in just a second. Yes. Uh, Again, what we're doing here, we're drafting bus position groups. Uh, some some ground rules. Here's the, here's the position groups. There's there's 10 picks, 10 groups. Quarterback, running back, tight end, wide receiver, offensive line. On the defensive side, defensive line, outside linebacker, inside linebacker. So we're going with the 3-4, okay. just to make that clear. And then uh, cornerback safeties. Can we just quickly go over, like, <laughs> they're, all of a sudden they're in a 4-3 and, like, uh, I, yeah. there, there's no it doesn't really matter no it, when it all comes down to it but like seeing someone like Carson Wells listed as defensive end just feels silly to me yeah it's it's interesting you know Chris Wilson made some good points during the uh during spring ball saying like we want to be multiple and, and the way that we're going to approach things is you know it's it's based on what the offense does and the offense every single offense in college football they're going to run about 60 to 70 percent of their plays in a base formation which means like 11 personnel, 12 personnel, mm -hmm. and we need to figure out what we do to stop that base formation. Everything else is situational. If you need to go lighter, you need to go far. And so it's going to be kind of week to week. And I don't know if they're going to be going 3-4 to 4-3 within games. I don't know what all that's going to look like. And honestly, I think they're mostly going to be a nickel anyway. That's what I was going to say is base defense mm -hmm. is a lost art in 2021 because mm -hmm. everyone, especially... I mean, everywhere. I was going to say, especially in the Pac-12, but it's not really. I mean, Alabama's running spread at this point. So, like, everyone is putting a bunch of receivers on the field at all times. I know. Which means you cannot have three linebackers out there at all times or exactly. else you're going to get cooked. And, and that's what Chris Wilson was saying is you play USC, they're running four receivers out there 60 to 70% of the time. That other 30%, who knows? Maybe it's third and short. Maybe it's whatever. It's situationally you might need to go heavier. But that means your base look is going to be nickel or maybe maybe even dime. Because right. I think technically their dime defense is going to be the one where they have Robert Barnes on the field. And I still think he's one of their best defenders. But you look at the depth chart, so he's a listed lot as of a backup. Like, there's a lot of panic over the depth chart. I know. I know. Um, I've been, of course, we're partnering with All Buffs on the tailgate tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> in like, I love All Buffs. Like, Me too. I, yeah, I've yeah. been They're great. perusing All Buffs my whole adult life and beyond. Yeah. Uh, even when I was a kid. Um, but like, I just it brought me back because there was so much. There's like people panicking over the depth chart. I was like, ah, right. I remember what this is yeah, like. No. Um, and I'm sure it was the same it's on Twitter. Football. Like, oh yeah. Like p everyone's boosting up Robert Barnes all off season. Then all of a sudden he's you know a backup. So yeah. I think yeah. that term multiple is really important to keep in mind. 
all of these guys are going to be playing mm -hmm. if they're good enough to play. Exactly. Uh, and they're going to be mixing up the defense a lot. Okay, let's jump in. Let's let's jump into this draft. Um, we've outlined the rules. I'll, I'll let you pick. It's going to be a snake draft. Do you want to go first or do you want to go second? Uh, I want to go second. That's a good pick. I think uh, there's two groups that kind of stand above. Really quick, we've got a lot of people watching on Periscope. Flip over to YouTube. It's a higher uh, higher quality product. Both of our tweets have the YouTube link in there yep. if that's where you found us. So uh, go over to YouTube. Hit us with a thumbs up while you're there as well. Yep. Uh, it'll help us get boosted up, get more Buffs fans in here. Exactly. Pick one. You know, this is <laughs> – I hate this. I, uh, I'm going running backs. Damn I'm it. going running backs. Um, and, and how could you not, right? Reigning Offensive Player of the Year in Jarek Broussard. The bell cow from the year before that – in uh, Alex Fontenot. And then you've got Ashad Clayton, who I was talking on TDSP. It's going to be out tomorrow. Definitely look for that. But Ashad Clayton, there was like a newspaper in Louisiana that put together an all-decade team. And the running backs, I'm pretty sure, like Derrick Henry, um, <laughs> Alvin Kamara, uh, Darius Geis, and Ashad Clayton. Oh, my God. And when you have that backfield, that's got to be the first pick, right? Didn't he like carry them to a state championship averaging 300 yards a game or something? To the state championship. And he, he averaged, I think, like three and a half touchdowns and like over 200 rushing yards a game in that run. And and what happened, for those of you who weren't paying attention during that time, so so he had offers from all the, the big dogs in the SEC. He I think he wanted to go to LSU even. And uh, he tore his ACL. Mm. And LSU pulled the offer. And Colorado kept the offer. And when LSU kind of swooped back in late in the process when all this was going on, Ashad said, no, I'm, I'm going to see you because they stuck with me. And what's really cool about Ashad, um, I feel like he's slowly but surely winning over the fan base mm -hmm. because there was this – everyone was reading into his, like, cryptic yeah. tweets early on. There was this feeling, oh, he's going to leave because Mel Tucker's uh -huh. leaving. Um, he, like – he was already kind of off to a bad start that they were going to give him wizard white's number a lot of people didn't <laughs> like that yeah and it was just everyone was kind of like oh he's gonna transfer and the fact mm -hmm. that he hasn't like for me as a f fan yeah uh it's like that makes me feel good you know it's like okay he's actually sticking this out he's sticking with this he knows he's gonna have to fight to earn playing time mm -hmm. and he's willing to do that uh i think that maybe he was mischaracterized i think so uh, as like a diva and this yep. that and the other and maybe you know all these kids who are stars in high school have a little bit in them but i don't think he is the guy that a lot of people thought he was when when he came to campus i totally agree and he had he had an interview this spring where he really opened up about all that stuff and said like it was really hard especially transitioning from louisiana to Colorado, which is a transition that in the past, if you like look at the, the, the recruits that have come from Louisiana, hasn't gone great. And a lot of them have left. I can't remember names because I've obviously don't... Cordell Stewart uh oh, yeah? stayed. Yeah. Interesting. Um, I didn't know he was even Louisiana. But yeah, so Ashad though was basically saying, you know, he, he grew up living with his grandma, living with his mom, and, and that was kind of a support system and to leave them was really hard. He went back over Christmas break and his grandma basically said, Hey, you've got two, three, four years, whatever here and you gotta make the most of it because you gotta buck up and this is a great opportunity and and he responded really well and he he does seem like he's grown a lot from where he was a year ago so i'm sad that you took that because i yeah, I, I thought i might one. be able to sneak it um but my question for you is how do you see the percentage shaking out in terms of carries jarek broussard was the guy last year mm -hmm. and that worked out really really well like how it as did. a coaching staff can you look at that and say like less carries for him I, it's really hard to do, but but you also look at it and say, hey, he had 30 touches a game last year, and in a six-game season, that's sustainable. Right, you can right, make that right. happen, but even that, he, he went from 185 pounds at the start of the season to 175. Wow. And that's not what you want. And, and I think you just look at that whole situation and say you can't give him 30 touches. If you can get down, down to 20, then maybe that works better, but... but Instead of looking at like the total average at the end of the season, I think you kind of look game by game and say, Northern Colorado, you give him some run. You, you want him to get his legs under him, but you give a bol the bulk of the work to Ashad. Next week, you might need a little bit more from Jarek, and you might save his legs for that situation. That's where you might see 30 touches for him. Man, you'd love to see Ashad get 14, 15, 16 carries in this game. Ugh. You for really? you know over a hundred yards and yeah. a, t a couple touchdowns to really get him going because mm -hmm. he's i mean how many carries does he have in his career at this point eight nine yeah, so i he, think he had like two last year before like week four and then against stanford 
He had like his first carry was a 17 yard touchdown or 17 yards. Two of the next three went for touchdowns. Yeah, and that was it for that game. It's I just, not a whole lot of work. We, he's never had an opportunity to get into a rhythm. I'd love to see what that looks like when he yep. does. I totally agree. And Alex Font, no, he needs to get his legs <laughs> under him too. He was so good. I mean, he's probably got the best vision. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Uh, you can say he's better to talk, vision than It's tough to talk. But his what vision was so good when he played. I'm so excited for tomorrow. He's like slippery. Um, all right. I think just because of the sheer amount of talent that exists in this group, I got to go wide receivers uh, yep. with the second pick. Um, I mean, top to bottom, all these guys are like names that you've heard, names that you know, names that have tons of talent uh, daniel mm -hmm. arias levante chanel mm -hmm. uh, brendan rice i'm really high on montana lamonius craig yep um dimitri stanley like if you were ranking the 10 best players on the team multiple of these guys are getting in there so uh, yeah that's i think be so the pick for and, me. and i think that maybe there's a little bit of risk there just because they aren't super proven you know how much have you seen from brendan rice how much have you seen from levante chanel but that is i definitely I mean, maybe not definitely. Probably the highest upside group on the team, and the 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 floor isn't that low. I think that's a good pick. So, my question for you here is: You said defensive line is a whole unit. So so defensive line, but not based on the four three depth <laughs> okay, chart. Okay. We're going three four. We're going okay, three four. All right, fine. You don't get Carson Wells and say, Josh I'm get and Lane guy and. and and Mustafa exactly. and Carson Wells. <laughs> That's right. Ooh, like half of Mustafa. I hadn't thought of that when I was going through my rankings. Mustafa changes that group a little bit. Yeah. Uh, what's the latest on that? What do you believe is going to happen with Mustafa in terms of when he can play? So I shout out all buffs. Here's what happened. About a week ago, I, I saw a tweet saying like, is, is it real? Mustafa is going to be back. And I was like, no, it's not. How could that possibly be? Still sleuthing on all buffs. It's like, there's some buzz. Nobody really has any firm things. Reached out to some people and, and heard that there's like a 50, 50 chance that they're going to be able to bring him back. And uh, there's going to be an unknown length of games for a suspension. And uh, that's basically what Brian Howell reported yesterday when he said that Mustafa has, has gotten the waiver from the NCAA to return. And uh, he said it won't be back. He won't be back in the first four games of the season. And when he comes in after that is kind of the question. But week five against Arizona State, uh, I think that's that's a good that's a good game to be back for. And, yeah. and I'm holding out hope. Wow, uh, that came out of nowhere. It's funny because we yeah. took a lot of crap for and it wasn't even our. Mm -hmm. We just reported what Carl Durrell told Matt McChesney, I which was. I think he said Terrence Lang, yeah. Mustafa Johnson, yep. Carson Wells, and Nate Landman will all be back next year. Of course, mm -hmm. then Mustafa leaves. And people are like, what the hell? You guys said. And we're like, that's what Coach Terrell said. But now it's all true. I know. And, and I look back to like uh, two months ago, I went to the barber. And it's the same barber who cuts Mustafa's hair. And, and he said like, yeah, I think Mustafa might be trying to come back to see you. I was like, no, he can't. <laughs> he can't. And, and now in hindsight, I'm like, how did I not? follow up just, on that just a suspension i was just like no you can't do it. it's just a suspension because he never signed anywhere and which to me pay things back all that if he pays everything back why does he need to be suspended i have no idea i, re I realize I have you have no to idea. like set a precedent somewhere where you can't just have this happening all yeah. the time yeah but it has the, like i've never heard of this happening before there there's the the one story that everybody's kind of citing including brian howe when he was doing this reporting because he's really good at that uh there there was the punter from uh arizona state it happened a couple years ago he wound up transferring to oklahoma um but it that that's the one that everybody points to i don't even know if there's another example it's really interesting it is and really exciting really exciting okay let me make my pick here okay um i am going to go uh, <laughs> i think i'm just gonna make sure i have nate landman on my I, team that's the right pick, I think. <laughs> i'm taking inside linebackers mm -hmm. um he is the heart and soul of the team also you have like the intrigue of robert barnes there yep uh you know some other guys involved so um i gotta have nate i just gotta have nate now i feel you like do. you know i talked about those the top 10 players on the team i feel like i'm stacking them up yeah I, I think that that's a great pick and there's there's just so much talent there and i do think that robert barnes is kind of a guy you can trust on top of that you you look at that depth chart and you don't love that robert barnes is listed as a backup but to see marvin ham and quinn perry as starters at this point it's got to mean something right 
it's got to be that something. they like progress is that what you're exactly. saying exactly like, yeah. and see i think there's some more upside there too with jack lamb coming that's that's where i would have gone with this next pick in okay st instead though i'm uh i'm taking the outside linebackers carson wells most underrated football player in the pac 12 you've got guy thomas jamar montgomery josh gustav i mean it does look like guy thomas is going to be I, you can't even call him the starter because they're probably not going to start in the 3-4, mm. but he's going to be, when they go to that 3-4, that, that other guy across from him. Um, with the upside of, of a couple of other guys, Jamar Montgomery, Josh Gustav, that's a very high floor group with Carson Wells. And out of those three, you could totally see one of them popping this season. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree. Um, I hope Guy Thomas is dope because you should have to be dope to wear number one. He's dope. I so if plug for the DMVR Buffs podcast for those who don't listen, I I did like a seven eight minute interview with him. It's on one of the episodes last week. Darian Hagen came up and pretended that he was Guy Thomas to to start that interview out. <laughs> it was it was a good time. So definitely go back and uh, look at that. Darian Hagen, man, he, he just like he's a fun guy. He's he <laughs> just he's just like around. He coaches a little bit. He gives everyone a little bit of shit. Yep. I'm out there I'm long number one. Yeah. I'm out ca causing chaos today, ruining quarterback days. And she's uh, like, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. All right, I am going to go with. Oh, see, why you got to do that to me, Kale? He never would have stopped me. That's right. I wouldn't have. I was uh, I was asleep at the wheel, and now I'm unprepared. Give me the tight ends. Nice. Give me the tight ends. I want Brady Russell on my side. Um, Brady to me, there's what? I think there's four tight ends in the Pac-12 that kind of separate themselves from the rest, and he's one of them. Um, where he fits into those four at the end of the season, I couldn't tell you because we didn't get to see enough of him last year. But what we did see was really exciting. The way the offense has changed and how they've started using the tight end I think is really exciting for Brady Russell in particular, the screens, all that kind of stuff. It's a big year for him, and they added so many. There's like 10 guys on the roster at that position right now, and so many of them are exciting. Caleb Fourier made the depth chart, yep. which is a name to that I think stands out to Buffs fans. Of course. You've got uh, Alec Pell, who looked great in that scrimmage, and mm. we've heard good things about him. Got some reps yeah, after switching from linebacker name, last year. I kept seeing his name pop up whenever, yeah. like, oh, another touchdown to Alec Pell from Brennan Lewis. Exactly, and he's like diving over guys and doing that kind of stuff. I, Matt Lynch, who we haven't even talked about. Yep. He's the steady hand, and he's the number three now behind Alec Pell on this depth QB4. chart. QB4. And, and probably, and maybe QB3. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Um, but but I, I think this tight end group, high upside, high floor with Brady Russell. Assuming assuming the health will knock on wood, but I can't reach any wood. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I feel good about that pick. All right, cool. Um, I'm going defensive line. Yeah, uh, I got to get Terrence Lang on my team here, Jalen Sammy. Um, mm -hmm. There's, again, talent in this group. And I feel like there's – I like this, that there's been six picks, three offensive groups, three defensive groups. Yeah. Um, I think the defense is the strength of this team. So mm -hmm. I'm happy to have, I guess, uh, multiple – um, two of my first three picks be on the defensive side. Uh, I, I look at this group and I just say, okay, like that's a good group. Um, you've got some question marks, um, some guys that you need to step up a little bit, uh, like Rodman and whatnot. Yep. But the top level talent is really there. Uh, and Terrence Lang is a freak. I mean, a, it's kind of go time for him. A, but he's a freak. He is. 6'7, 285, like uber athletic. Um, he's got a lot to prove this year. Mm hmm from a NFL standpoint, yep. but he has everything you need to be a dominant player in college. Yeah. And, and you know, we, we talk about what like a, the three, four means for Carson Wells versus the four, three and don't love it. On the other side of that, Terrence Lang getting to play that kind of big edge mm -hmm. spot with mm -hmm. that defensive end in the four, three, I think that that fits his strengths maybe a little bit more. And I, I'm really excited to watch him. He's a freak. And you get Mustafa at some point this season too, probably. Oh, right. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we just talked about just, it. Just Mustafa. Yeah. Just Mustafa. Yeah. He's a, it's so weird. I, I, I just, the whole situation is so weird, but I know all of a sudden mid season, you're just going to get an NFL caliber defensive lineman. It's incredible. Or I guess almost NFL caliber. And I guess the, NFL the NFL didn't think so, but no, they don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. I mean, He's short. That's all it, it is. It should not matter He's short. at that position. No, it shouldn't. He's short, though. Leverage. 
Luckily, you got Terrence to balance him out. Yes. Uh, you got the back-to-back here, right? Oh, my gosh, yes. Snake drafts. Uh, Kale's the expert on snake drafts here. Um, <laughs> okay. I'm going to go corners. That's a good pick. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Makai Blackman, <laughs> Christian Gonzalez, um, and then – some question marks behind them, but again, when you talk about top level talent on the team, I think those yep. two guys are are fitting in there. And and the the lack of depth, and and I don't even. It's it's a weird situation. You've got Nigel Bethel there, who's exciting. You know, you've got Chris Miller, who doesn't even show up on the depth chart, but that's just because he plays the nickel, and there's no nickel. You can on that depth chart, there's like the little N that that signifies like the nickel guy, and there's just no N anywhere because. The end guy they isn't. Just didn't put it put him on the depth chart at all because there. What he's no no he's no those positions. So at least he's like the create, nickel. So create another thing that's like over here by like kickoff returner. <laughs> I know that's, just say like yeah. nickels. Fair, <laughs> fair. But but I mean the in this defense like it's kind of a hybrid safety corner. But he he kind of factors in there too. Yeah. If there was more depth though, this position group would be way up higher with. Christian Gonzalez and uh, Makai Blackman. So you uh, obviously uh, we have uh, Carson Wells as the most underrated player on the team. And Would you put Makai Blackman second? He he is. I think he is. I mean, and, and the reason he isn't first is because he was preseason second team All Pack twelve. Carson was uh, honorable mention. No, he wasn't even. No, he was honorable mention. That's right. That's it right. Doesn't matter. There's nothing honorable about that. I know. I talked to him about it a couple of weeks ago, and he just stressed. I was like, "What do you think of that?" And he said, "Disrespectful." It is disrespectful. And I was like, Any th- "Anything else? Like, you want to explain it? Like, disrespectful?" Honorable mention preseason All American would be acceptable. But he doesn't. He doesn't play in L.A. He doesn't. He doesn't play for Oregon. So when you gotta knock somebody out, who do you knock out? It's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. Um. Wow. We're getting down to it now. I'm uh, I'm going with the offensive line. Nice. I, I, this is a group that could have gone much earlier, but I mean, people just don't get as excited as they probably should about offensive linemen. You know, there are some questions, especially early in the season. Casey Roddick had uh, the 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 sickness that that's kept him out from like the beginning of spring ball all the way through the summer. He was cleared the day before camp, and he's still working his way back, so he's listed as a backup. Um, you've got Frank Phillip, who I think is going to take over the starting job at some point, um, but but he won't be back until week three, week four of the season, Carl said. And, and there's a couple other guys who've been banged up, and they're kind of piecing this together. So it could be kind of a slow start. The good news is there's seven guys that, that I'd be excited to see on the field. The problem is right now there's, there's about – Five plus Casey Roddick, who's at half strength. Fair. Um, do you get back to back here? I do get back to back. Damn it. So do I take safeties or quarterbacks? Ah. Uh, <sighs> give me the safeties. Yes. Give me the safeties. Yes. I. Uh, Mark Perry has so much upside. He and does. He, he's talked about it. Like the there was some confidence stuff last year. Some mistakes he made. I think he's ready to turn a corner. And on top of that, you've got Isaiah Lewis, who played really well last year, but was, you know, not not a big name recruit, wasn't like making a couple of splash plays early in his career to get his name out there. And and I think you half count Chris Miller in this group as well. And, and I think that because of those things, there's there's enough to like and get excited about. And the quarterback position just scares me. Okay, so... <laughs> I ended up getting like my favorite player on the team though, in yeah, Brendan Lewis. Fair, um, that's a good one. I love Brendan Lewis. Um, you know, the one thing that concerned me in that Texas game when we finally got to see him play a little bit was his arm strength. Mm-hmm. Uh, it definitely he wasn't throwing rockets by any sure. means, but you know he was 18 years old. Um, he's only growing. He's only getting mm-hmm. bigger. His legs are tree trunks. Um, I think that his potential is so high. I actually really like the silver lining of the injury um, to I'm blanking. JT Trout, Trout. Um, is that he got it got to be his team for a few weeks. Yep. He didn't have to. He doesn't have to feel like someone's looking over his shoulder. He's really not looking over his shoulder. Um, he is not. <laughs> and he gets to just like be himself. He mm-hmm. doesn't have to think like, oh god, if I go have a bad game tomorrow. They mm-hmm. might be thinking about playing JT against AM. Like, yep. None of that. He really gets to go play freely. 
and I'm super, super, super excited for him. Um, and I think he allows this team to do some stuff that they haven't been able to do in the last couple of years, um, or at least at a higher level. I agree. Um, like, they need to, you know, go back into the uh, Cepho Lufau playbook, bring back the quarterback counter uh, in short yardage. I swear – Cepho must have been like 20 out of 22 on that on the <laughs> season of converting third huh. and fourth and short. Uh, actually, I can't even remember him getting stopped once. I'm just assuming it must have like happened Visca at some with point. the Wildcat. Right, right. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, again, he's at – what's his squat at? The, it's the record. Yeah. I don't, I don't know the number just because I've never – done like a measured squat <laughs> before so well, i, I mean, mean it's over 500 pounds I, I, yeah like it could be like 700 or it could be 200 and i don't know what's impressive <laughs> for a squat is impressive it is to you. all i know is to be impressed by the number that it is so i think that if we put this out to a poll i'm gonna smoke you i think so too I <laughs> like if so you too. look at the players i got uh, oh yeah i'm i'm curious obviously it's a good group jarek has got to be a lot of people's favorite player but like mm -hmm. brendan rice is like the, probably the leader in hype I think that's fair, yeah. Yeah, uh, and, and that's why, like, Brendan Lewis maybe doesn't throw the ball downfield much. We've seen what happens when you short, throw a short pass to Brendan Rice. Oh, yeah. He's got playmakers to do that for him. Yep. Uh, I think most people's favorite player is Nate Landman. It should uh, be. Mustafa and Terrace Lang have a big following. Cornerback. And then I got, like, everyone. everyone's excited for Brendan Lewis until they're not. This, po this, this poll is going to be <laughs> I the think, good one. I, I think I'm going to I think I'm going to kill you. We'll see. We'll see. Ooh, I'm, I'm now that I do look at the positions, the I mean, not not a lot of sexiness in there. Right, Outside right. linebackers, tight ends, <laughs> offensive, offensive line. line. <laughs> okay, we'll we'll see how it goes. Also, now that I think of it, like, yeah, if if like <laughs> Brendan does retweet this, which I think is more likely than Kari Jared. Cooch retweeting mm. this, like, <laughs> I, I, I yeah. I mean, I can I really, have handled some things. Poorly. If I need to, I can tag them, you know. And, yeah, hey, I got could. Brendan Rice, and wow, and you would win. Um, it is crazy though. Like that that running backs group is like top to bottom stacked. It is crazy, and you know what else is crazy? The tailgate that we are going to have tomorrow mm, before the game. That is actually legitimately going to be crazy. I I still haven't bought the wagon. I, I've been asked that again recently. Ooh, you said that correctly. I, I no, because you guys were all making jokes instead of telling me how to say it the right way last time. I like it better. When I you had say Dre wagon. Say, these these ag words like mm. like I know bag is not bag. Yes. It's bag. Flag. I, flag is flag. I've learned that bagel is bagel, not bagel. Uh huh. I, uh, wagon, not wagon. Yes. So so many of these that you're doing great. They're just one by one that I I, I don't. Understand. But yeah, we like it better when we see your Montana. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Right there. Uh, but uh, I've still got to go buy that wagon because that's the only way I'm going to get these 14 cases of beer to our tailgate with all buffs tomorrow. It's going to be a great time. There's, we're going to be grilling. And all that beer comes from Breckenridge Brewery. Mm. They do so many awesome things for us, like uh, give us beer for that tailgate, give us beer for the soccer tailgate last week, um, to, to paying to sponsor this podcast so that this show is possible. They've been one of our longest tenured partners. We really appreciate them. They do all sorts of great things. You like, want a uh, Breck brew, like right now? I'm down. Cool. I'll go get us. Okay, one. you handle that. Wait, we have I know. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. So we're up here. Okay, I'll keep going. You, you. Um, but yeah, one percent of their profits this summer are going to the National Parks Conservation Association. What what more could you ask for? We love them. Um, if you want to check out their stuff, come down to the DMVR bar. Uh, Go to like any grocery store, any liquor store, any of that kind of stuff. If you want to make sure that they have what you want to try, make sure you use the beer locator on the breckbrew.com website. It'll tell you exactly where to pick up the strawberry sky, the seltzers, whatever it is that you want to try. Oh, I haven't tried the summer pills. Um, also, want to give a shout out to our friends over at DraftKings. They've got so many awesome things going on right now. Um, I know that uh, they have a uh an, another hammer the over promotion going on uh or maybe that's the ohio state game that's already started no, no clemson, georgia. clemson georgia hammer the over and last i saw last night it was down to 14 and a half which means if you bet on it and there's more than 15 points score more than 14 points score i guess then you get to all the money and for every <laughs> 2500 people who bets the over it goes down another half point they've got some other promotions going on next weekend as well 
Um, they've got one of those with the Buccaneers. Um, basically, there's like a hundred. 75 to a hundred dollars in free money for new users for users who've been around for a while so definitely get on there and check all that stuff out and right now if you bet one dollar on any nfl game and you're a new user you get 200 dollars in free bets instantly you can't top that deal it's a uh, obviously just free money and you don't want to pass that up so download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now use the promo code DMVR and receive $200 in free bets when you place a $1 bet on any football game that's promo code DMVR to get your free $200 in free bets instantly for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook an official sports betting partner of the NFL must be 21 or older Colorado only new customers only minimum $5 deposit and $1 wager required one per customer restrictions apply see DraftKings.com sportsbook for details gambling problem call one 800 52 to 4700 real quick on the breck brews cheers yeah, I gotta try this you got to open it first that's bad luck do you see how i'm reaching i'm gonna spill oh i should have opened it next to the mic there you go I'm cheers strong. so we have so much breck brew for the tailgate tomorrow and we were told quote there will be leftovers and i that's took that as a deep deep challenge so come to the tailgate help us put down what mm -hmm. is Somewhere north of 150 beers? Yep. 14 cases of breakfast. 14 yeah, I just cases. don't know how big each case is. I have is. no idea. I Are have no 12? idea. Is a, like, a case where, when I was a kid, quote unquote, was 30. I know these aren't yep. coming in 30 packs, no, but exactly. I know Breck does 15 packs. Are they all 15 packs? Well, that's why I'm saying north of 150. We can be sure that it's north of 150. We need your help. Yep. Let's crush some. Evan Batty helped us last weekend. He, he handled a couple for us. He did. We, uh, there were some Legally. other... The problem right now is that the rest of the basketball team is underage. Mm -hmm. And so, it, like, everybody's just kind of, like, hanging out with their water bottles. And There used to be Evan this <laughs> – I think his name is Evan Harrington. He was a okay. fullback for the Buffs. And everyone called him Uncle Evan because he was, like, old by the end of it. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's perfect for Evan Batty. Yeah, I think that is perfect. Mm. Speaking of Evan Batty – Bar's pretty rowdy right now. Bar is rowdy. Uh, speaking of Evan Batty, though, I had a chance to uh, talk with him this morning um, about baby Ralphie – about uh, the rest of the live mascots, including one that's uh, from just a little bit north of here, and he has some notes on that one. Uh, so, Kale, want to show the good people what Evan Batty had to say? I'm gonna provide like a list or something of of live mascots, or what? Can I grow? All right, I'm here with Evan Batty of the Buffs basketball team, and uh, we want to talk about Ralphie a little bit. First of all, like. Evan, what, what was your first impression when you saw uh, some of the stuff that was coming out about Ralphie yesterday? Uh, my first impression was kind of how little the Buffalo is. Uh, uh -huh. Obviously, she's a baby, so um, she's going to grow with time. But um, it's cute. It's really cute. It's like a cute is, little Buffalo. Have you had a chance to meet her yet? No, nah, I haven't got a chance to meet her at all yet. Okay. Yeah, because I saw like the she was out at like a football practice, and right. uh, the football team right. got to see her. I feel like right. I feel like they've got to get you in there soon. Yeah, yeah. It's a good looking little buffalo. Uh, I, I feel like we should actually see if we can uh, get her to run while she is so little at the basketball game. Like I feel like that little buffalo is you might be able to get her outside the like the perimeter of the court. She, yeah, she might destroy the court though with her hooves. I don't even know. Yeah, that's what the true. process for that is. Yeah. You could, you could like, put some like socks on her or something. Yeah, you, you definitely can put like some little booties on her for sure. Plus, like I don't know if, if they're gonna be letting Jabari on that court after what he did to that backboard in Costa Rica. Facts. I mean, Ralphie has done nothing wrong. Yeah, exactly. She might be better off than Jabari. All right. Um. So we're gonna play a game real quick. Um. I pulled up a bunch of pictures of a bunch of different mascots live mascots from around the country and uh i, I want to know your thoughts we're going to be ranking these guys one to ten and uh we're gonna actually start with the university of texas and bevo um here here you go you can get a little peek at him right there well what do you what do you think this how does it compare to ralphie uh i know it doesn't doesn't beat ralphie but i'd say he's not far behind so i'd say like Probably three or four. Three or four? Three or four. Ralphie's, yeah. Ralphie's a 10, by the way, right? Well, Ralphie's number one on the list. Well, okay. one yeah. being the best and Tim being the best. <laughs> okay. Okay. 
Uh, next up, we got uh, Smokey, the, the dog from Tennessee. Yeah, uh, that's just like a usual dog. I can find that anywhere. So like, exactly. Like they, they put like a like, vest on a dog and pretended it's special. Right, like probably in the later stages of the one through ten, probably okay. nine to ten. <laughs> okay. Um, next up, we've got another dog. At least this is like a bulldog. You know, like I feel like this is a little bit cooler. Yeah, I like I like uh, the bulldog from Georgia. Um, I feel like that's probably right behind Evo, the the cow, or okay. Uh, yeah. Probably right behind Vito. All right. Uh, we got uh, Mike the Tiger up next from LSU. I mean, I think that's number two. I think that's has been number two because I just, you know, it's a tiger. So, yeah. yeah They're cool. Right Little, behind Ralph but but me, it probably. doesn't, like, go out on the football field, you know? Like, like it uh, just kind of like, hangs out outside. Oh, well, like, it's probably, like, six or seven then if it doesn't go no, out on right? the football field. What a waste. A mascot yeah. needs to be at the football game. Yeah, uh, six, 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 six or seven. <laughs> six or seven. Okay, we got uh, Renegade, the horse here from uh, Florida State. What is that? Florida State? It's, yeah, Florida State. Hmm. What's the mascot? The horse or the Seminole? <laughs> I, I think like it's like a team thing. We're, we're grading the horse, though. We're grading the horse. Renegade. I mean, there's a number of schools that have horses as their mascot. I mean, not as their main mascot, but USC kind of had the same thing with Traveler and, you know, yep. the Trojan that they ride. So it's kind of, you know, been there, done that. So I'd probably make it in the later parts of the rankings as well. Okay. Um, War Eagle here. Uh, uh, this that's number two for me. Yeah, flies around the stadium. That's, that's dope. That's a good one. Yeah, that's number two. Yeah, I was waiting on that, actually. So... <laughs> <laughs> okay um we've got uh sir big spur here south carolina uh i, I mean i assume that's a gamecock i don't know what yeah. gamecocks are um <laughs> some type of rooster or chicken type mm -hmm. looking thing uh it's middle of the pack five six seven probably okay. on there yeah, I mean, it's just – it's basically just like a chicken. It's just a chicken. I know. could bring a chicken to a football game. I can easily bring a chicken to a football game. <laughs> um, and then finally, up from Fort Collins, Cam the Ram. Um, that, that's a 10. That's, you know, ranked 10, the last one on the list. I mean, this shouldn't even be on this list because, I don't know, CSU. But, uh, I, I mean, that's, that's cool. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a Ram, you know. You don't see Rams every day, so I mean it's cool, but uh, I just don't like it. <laughs> Bottom of the list. Bottom yeah. of the list. And just uh, one sure. more, one more thing on Cam the Ram. There, we've got uh, a great tweet out from the Buffs account just a couple minutes ago. Just comparing the size of uh, Baby Ralphie, yep. even compared to Cam the Ram, like yep. twice the size. Yep, no, yep. that's how we do it. You know, we just double them up. You know. Yep, yep. Got a nice little uh, piece of corn down there in the corner, too. Yeah, yeah. Love that. All right, uh, thanks for jumping on, Evan. It was good to see uh, you. And uh, looks, looks like you're in the gym working yeah, I'm out. I'm in the gym right now. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, applied my lower workout to do this. So it's all good. All right. Uh, all right. Hope it all goes well, and we'll see you at the stadium on Friday. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Great stuff. So, guy, Evan Batty, uh, uh, any any beef with his rankings? Uh, no, I didn't see any cows. No. <laughs> oh, actually, Bevo, that would be my Bevo. beef. Yeah. Um, no. no. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> obviously, I thought he went a little soft on Cam the Ram. Uh, Cam the Ram, like, just stick with the fluffy fake mascot. So little did I know that that tweet that that I showed kind of at the end there. Turns out, like, Ram fans and actual, like, Rams football players were, like, quote-tweeting that saying, let's compare their testicles. I think that was, like, a literal quote from the long snapper. Oh, yes. I saw that. One is a woman. What is <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> yeah, like... A welcome, female, I should say. Yeah, welcome back to, like, the 1970s where people say, right. like, well, at least ours is a man. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, literally. I know. And, like, <laughs> it's like, they, like uh, fans were, like, supporting that. I know, right? And and I'm, I'm, a, I'm not ashamed of this. 
I, I googled bison testicles. <laughs> Actually, I googled bison balls. Turns out, like they <laughs> they look delicious. Yeah, but, uh, uh, just like balls. Have you had them? Not Rocky not the oysters? testicles. No, 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 no. But they they like. Oh, it was buffalo balls that, that they make into like buffalo chicken balls. But no, I've never had Rocky Mountain oysters either. Very good. You can get them at the Dark Horse. I won't. I won't. You should do it. No. I think you're, next time we go there, I'm going to order some. You can have a bite. I, I legitimately just spent this afternoon scrolling through pictures of of oh now you're like buffalo, emotionally attached buffalo testicles <laughs> because because i had to know like are are they bigger like are the ram fans the ram fans are not making a point but uh mm. now i'm no no interest in eating those yeah uh i i really couldn't believe that i was like they realize like this makes them look really dumb right but they they don't because they are dumb they are they are i they i have are. to say <laughs> your idea of putting socks on baby Ralphie mm. and letting her run it at, at the event center. 10 out of 10. I agree. 10 out of 10 idea. We need to make this happen. It's an opportunity that will not last long. No. Buffaloes grow quickly. She's going to be 1,300 pounds in like three years. I've had this other idea, though. Okay. That protects the court, as I know Evan was very concerned about that. Yep. Run her through the concourse. <sighs> and you could lay down like uh -huh. our... Like a gold uh -huh. carpet that goes around the whole thing so she yep. keeps her grip and let her run the concourse. I love it. And maybe that's like our happy middle ground. Right. Running on the court, I I understand it's why. It, it would also be I a really know. tight turn. It would be. For a buffalo. They don't have a great turn radius. It's a very small buffalo at this point. I know, but turn radius, not their strength. Okay. Fair. Fair. <laughs> They're very much a straight ahead yes. sort of animal. Um, we've got to get to our over-unders. We're going to do that in just a second. Um, but speaking of testicles, because we've been doing a lot of speaking about those, um, our good friends at Manscaped have put together some awesome, some awesome <laughs> offers for us. Um, it's fantasy football season. It's uh, time to put the PP back in PPR League with the sponsors of today's wow. show, Manscaped. Um for those of you who haven't heard, Manscaped is uh, the leader in below-the-waist grooming, and they've just launched the new Performance Package 4.0. Uh, don't uh, neglect your balls like the Packers front office has been neglecting Aaron Rodgers. It's just, it's just not right, because mm. look at what happens. Yes. And Nobody's then, happy. Once you're proud of your balls, you can you know try and compare them to the size of Ralphie's. Yeah, and I bet Ram fans spend a lot of time comparing them to the size of cans. We should ask. We should ask Justin if he thinks about that. Like, how often do the? I don't know. They were so ready to talk about. It, it was everywhere. <laughs> They're really proud of their mascots. <laughs> I had no appendage. idea. I had no idea. I'm lost. The the point is, if you want to take care of your family jewels, Manscaped makes it easy. They've got all sorts of great products from the Lawnmower 4.0, which is their body hair trimmer. It uh, it's the best on the market, 7,000 RPM, but comes with a skin safe technology, an advanced skin safe technology. The the perfect or the performance package 4.0 comes with a bunch of other products too. Get some boxers, get a T-shirt, a travel bag, um, bag, the weed whacker sorry uh nose and ear hair trimmer which i actually haven't gotten yet oh you're probably too young to need that yet i was <laughs> i'm getting there <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm getting there um but yeah there's a whole bunch of other stuff too that the 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 crop preserver ball deodorant we talk about a lot it's a it's a must in the summer uh the the texas a&m game next week middle of the afternoon sitting out in the sun drinking beers for hours before that game that's a day where you got to be taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, so definitely go to manscaped.com, figure out what you need. They've got a bunch of great options. Use the promo code DNVR and get 20% off and free shipping. It's promo code uh, DNVR for 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. Um, do it. We love them. So we've got an update here. Um, uh, it's delayed right now, but in the first okay. quarter, Utah losing to Weber State. 7-3. Interesting. Let's go Big Sky. Yeah. Also, let's go Pac-12. Eh. That's a tough one for me. Uh, my first reaction is F them. Okay. Yeah. Fair. It's the official position of this podcast. I'll back the pack in the NCAA tournament, and that's about it. I'm an Oregon State fan. Because of Sam Neuer? Because of Wayne Tinkle, and then the I run they like, went on, I do and like then Tinkle Sam Town. Neuer. Yeah, I mean, 
Oregon State brings up kind of like shady that's memories right. that's for Buffs right. fans. I have to remember those um, things. But I do like Wayne Tingle. I've, I've met him personally. He's a cool dude. He is a cool dude. Um, and he's going to Montana Grizzly Hall of Fame this summer. Oh, I yeah. do like Sam Neuer. Yep. Um, Corvallis? Can't say I like that. Never been. But uh, I believe you. But, yeah, I mean, and as far as Pac-12 teams go, they're on the low side of mm-hmm. hateability. Yep. Uh, let's jump in. We want to talk about tomorrow's game. As we've said over and over again, Northern Colorado tomorrow to open the season at Folsom Field. Uh, we're playing a game of over-under. I came up with a bunch of different lines that I set, hopefully accurately. Otherwise, Ryan's going to make fun of me. And uh, <laughs> I'm definitely <laughs> true. Let's, uh, we got about 10 of them, so we'll, we'll move pretty quick. Okay. What's our first one here, Kale? Ooh, lower, th- lower third style. And I like it. Over-under six and a half yards per carry for the buffs. All right, I got to think about how many carries there's going to be. So mm-hmm. I'm going to take the under here, but the reason I'm doing that is because I think late in the game, you're going to get a lot of, like, backup linemen, backup running backs, okay. backup quarterbacks even, maybe. Yep. And sacks factor in in college. And I just think that that's going to hurt this. Like, I think they might be averaging, like, 7.5 going into the fourth quarter okay. and then average, like, one in the fourth quarter. That's fair. I, uh, I, th- I think I'm on the same page, except I think they keep it up in the fourth quarter, and I'm taking the over. Have you ever noticed that Minnesota's quarterback looks just like their coach? No. They're both like feeling bald-headed guys with beards. A lot of time learning about those two in a couple weeks. Uh, that's true. Yep. We're getting a little scouting report here on Minnesota. They uh, Just be bigger and stronger and faster at every position, I have a feeling, is going to be what we take away from Ohio State. Yes. Well, Ohio State letting them drive a little here early. So Yeah. Not a good news. Not good news. All right. What's up next, Kale? Oh, over under 24 and a half Come yards on. for Jarek's longest Come on. run. Now I got to make fun of you because this is a terrible line. Over. Put it at it's 50 over. and a half I know, and I, I probably agree. still take the over. I agree. It's the over. It's the over. We, we saw what he did to CU's defense in the well, That's what scrimmage. I was going to say. He like, had two carries for 100 and something yards. And those were the guy. I mean, the some of the starters for North Carolina are going to be guys who transferred from that. De- sorry. UNC. But uh, it's good. They've got guys who could not make it there uh, without – that was a harsh way to put it, honestly. But, uh, yeah, it's the over. He's, yes. he's going to break at least one that's 25. I would, if you gave me over under 24 and a half on, on any of his first five, I would still take the over. What about if I said two runs? Oh, oh, oh no. How about over under two and a half runs, 24 and a half, or 25 yards or longer? Over. Two and a half? Yeah. Over. Three 25-plus yard runs from Jarek. Yes. I'll, you like to hear it. Yes. That's a tough line. I'll, I'm, I'm hyped. I'll take it, too. I just worry <laughs> that they take him out too soon. I, well, that's, that's what I was concern. thinking about, too. But then I was like, he only needs three drives for this, in my opinion. He only needs three runs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he just needs to make sure they don't start, like, 60 yards from the end zone on that first drive. Six and a half buffs touchdowns. So 49 would would be the baseline for a cover on mm-hmm. this um the line is 37 38 38 now. and that was a couple hours ago it might be 39 now so here's my biggest concern yep carl Durrell coached ed mm-hmm. mccaffrey mm-hmm. there's definitely a relationship there of some sort yeah this is his friend or acquaintance who's coaching in their first ever game i don't know if he's gonna want to like run it up on him and you don't even necessarily have to want to run it up on him to potentially do so but i i don't know if i see the buff scoring more than 50 points um so i'm thinking this game's closer to like 44 to 7 okay 44 to 3 that'll come down to whether they cover or not if they give mm-hmm. up a touchdown or a field goal but uh yeah i'm gonna take the under here I think I think running the ball is just going to be so easy that that they should be able to to, to score touchdowns instead of field goals. I'm taking the over. I, I said this on the podcast. Uh, I've I've got it 52 to six, seven touchdowns and a field goal. Okay, there you go. We'll we'll see who's right next week. Over under 99 and a half yards Ooh. for CU's leading receiver. I gotta go under here. I, I only mm. I only have Brendan Lewis in my head, and maybe we'll get to this in a second. Okay. Uh, around like 180 passing yards. Okay. So I don't think someone's going to have, you know, over 50% of that. Yeah, I agree. I agree that it should be under. Um, again, potential for somebody to break a big one, but I've got the under. Next up, over under 
half a Brendan Lewis snap in the second half. Do we see Brendan Lewis in the second half? Absolutely. Okay. Um, you got to, uh, you know, he hasn't played in a college mm -hmm. game before. So you at least have to get him used to, okay, you go into the half, you have your talk, you do your adjustments, you go out, you warm up, and then you go and you execute those adjustments. Uh, that's a really important thing. So at the very least, one. But it's not like, I mean, you obviously do have to get these backups a couple reps. You do. And it doesn't hurt to get Brendan out of harm's way early. Yeah, I mean, there's an old um, Tony Dungy said he went to Peyton Manning. I, I, I might be butchering this story, but Perfect. this is the way I remember the story in my head. I love this. Tony Dungy went to Peyton Manning in the preseason or in training camp and said, like, hey, dude, we need to get the backup some reps with the mm -hmm. ones just in case you ever go down. And Peyton said, like, if I ever go down, we're effed anyway. <laughs> that and that's kind of where, <laughs> where things are with Brendan Lewis. That's fair. Um, you don't like, yeah. Would you like to get those guys some reps? Yes. For sure. Much more important is developing Brendan Lewis. So if you leave him in for three quarters, which I think is probably the minimum, okay. then, uh, then yeah, hey, this covers. I've got a little bit less. I, I think that I, I'm taking the over. I think he gets one or two drives in, in the second half. I don't think it's much more than that. Um, I like the thought process though. Last one. I'm definitely think, taking the over maybe here. Maybe not. Oh, okay. Four more. Uh, I'm. I think Ralphie runs. I think Ralphie runs too. They're also like promoting it as such, so they're gonna at least try. Obviously, they yep. they do have to. I mean, this they're, is true of any time Ralphie ever runs. If she's acting weird, they don't run her. Yep. So they're not gonna put her in a bad position. Um, but yeah, uh, I've I've got Ralphie running. I do too. Sixty-five and a half percent completion percentage for Brendan Lewis over. I've got the over too. I've got him like. I think I said, uh, I, I've got him 14 of 16, 180 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, can we get the next one, Kale? <laughs> Sorry. Under zero. I got zero. This is for the podcast. One and a half Brendan Lewis turnovers. Sorry, That's sorry I, I forgot quickly. about that. Oh, it's all good. Uh, under that, zero. I would go under 0.5 too. Oh, wow. I, I think it was tough to sign between 0.5 and 1.5. I. I think it's 50-50 he has a turnover. Okay. Yep. I'll be disappointed if he does. Over under <clears throat> three and a half combined tackles for loss from Nate Landman and Carson Wells. Your best line yet. Um, oh, gosh. I'll go over. I got the over. Yeah. Two each. I'm going to say two sacks and a TFL for Carson. And then I'm not okay. sure about Nate. I, I'm, I, I don't know how much Nate's going to play. Yeah. And I think it makes sense for Carson. Yeah. He gets disrespected. Go, go pad your stats here. Yes, absolutely. Do your thing. Oh, man. 149 and a half total North Carolina yards. Northern Colorado. Um, Every time. I have... Oh, sorry. I was watching the game. Um, <laughs> I have to go over here. That is so low. It's so mm -hmm. low. I, I, I hope mm -hmm. it goes under, but I'm thinking the same thing. Like fourth quarter, Buffs have a bunch of backups yep. in. They're still trying to get reps for their starters. And they go lead like a 70-yard field goal drive. I've got the under. I went through some of the numbers last year. San Diego State put up 155. I, th I think it's under. I think okay. that defense can do that. San Diego State only put up 155 yards. More up. than half of that their plays went for zero or negative. That was such a joke. He was. That was bad. And now we get to see Dylan McCaffrey. What fun Weirdly enough, my lasting memory from that game is Sam Neuer throwing a pick six. Like, really <laughs> bad throw to the outside hash. There were a couple of those. Is that the last one? That's the last one. Ooh, okay. That's that's all we have planned for this show. Any final shot thoughts, Ryan? Um, man, again, I I just cannot wait, dude. Like tomorrow, mm -hmm. we wake up, we do the golf tournament. Yeah. Like twelve hours from now, we'll be waking up, getting ready for the golf tournament. Go straight from there up to Boulder, um, for our first tailgate with all buffs, which yep. I think is gonna be awesome. Catch us on the north side of Farron Field. <coughs> I'll probably cry when we step foot in Folsom. I'll cry when I see Ralphie. Yeah. I'll cry when I see Ralphie. Yeah, there's going to be some tears tomorrow. Yep. And, uh, that's that's the beauty of college football. Yeah, I've got a long day. We've got that golf tournament at 8. I'm also going to be on altitude 92.5 at 8 with Vic and Moj. 
I'll be at the site of uh, the second <laughs> yep. Oddcast Cup in which Moj made a 25-foot putt to beat us on number 18. Um, that's going to be fun. If you guys want to tune in and listen, that's the best radio show in Denver. And uh, from there to the tailgate to the game. And then around like 1230, we have a new show. It's called DNVR Buffs After Dark. It's going to be our post-game show. I've got a lot of things I have to do after the game, like interviews, like driving all the way back to Denver. But me and our guy Dev, who's also going to be down there covering the game, we're going to be going live at like 1230 tomorrow night. I know maybe you guys are asleep. Obviously, YouTube is a thing, but... Uh, I don't know how people sleep after sporting events. I I, I have know. to unwind for like three hours after I get home. That's why least. I have this job. Yeah. Because I'm might i going to be up anyway. Why not be up for six hours writing and doing I'm things? looking forward to that, though. DMVR buffs after dark. It's going to be a fun one. All right. It's going to be a fun one. That's all we've got for you guys today, and uh, we'll, we'll be doing this a lot. Make sure you give a five-star rating to the podcast. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube, all that good stuff. We appreciate it. We'll see you guys soon. <laughs>